So these are the guidelines that I give my clients in order to optimize hypertrophy. First of all is frequency. It seems optimal to train every body part twice a week. That means that you could do your full body on Monday and your full body on Friday, you'd have satisfied that evidence-based guideline for hypertrophy. Gotcha. Or you can do upper body Monday, lower body Tuesday, upper body Thursday, lower body Friday, and so on. But you're training everything about twice a week. That's optimal for, for hypertrophy. Then people ask, well, how much volume? How many sets do I do? The range seems to be about 10 to 20 sets a week. And that would be sort of what's considered a minimum effective volume and maybe a maximal recoverable volume. Some people may be able to do more. Uh, so maybe you come in on to do, say your split is a Monday, Friday, full body. You'd only have to do five sets per body part on Monday and five sets per body part on Friday to achieve the minimum effective volume. And that would be for hypertrophy, not just maintenance. That would actually cause you to grow. For maintenance, you might only need five sets a week to be able to maintain muscle tissue. We promote that heavily in terms of people who are dieting to lose weight. Yeah. Please lift weights, because otherwise you'll lose muscle tissue and you'll lower your BMR. And what we're trying to do is make sure that you hold on to as much muscle as possible. That would be maybe your minimum commitment, five sets a week per body part, maybe only training once a week, just get to the gym once a week and do five sets per body part. You could be in and out of there in 30 minutes. You could hold on to your muscle. But to optimize hypertrophy and grow, that's about the volume that we're looking for. So anywhere from five to 10 sets per body part twice a week would get you your range of 10 to 20. Full body splits actually seem to have the best effect in terms of overall body fitness and insulin yeah. sensitivity. So it's, it's really a good idea. Okay. Uh, as you progress and you get closer to this 20 sets per week, it becomes harder to do the full body. It's it a two-hour workout. It's a two-hour yeah. workout. Yeah, yeah. And that's just a matter of what are your time constraints. Now, effort. This is pretty important. I liken this to the difference between exercise versus training. If you do 10 reps and you could have done 20, you're exercising, you're not training. The effort invested in that set is probably not enough to cause an effective stimulus to grow muscle. And so we do want to get within one to three reps of failure. The more experienced you are, the closer you want to get to failure. But a newbie, you can leave three or four reps in the tank and still make sufficient progress. You don't have to go to failure. I always thought that. Yeah. And you end up creating a lot of fatigue a lot of delayed onset muscle soreness, potentially get closer to injury. And so, you know, we like to let people leave reps in the tank so that we can uh, optimize the frequency. Now you can come back two yeah. days or three days later and feel refreshed instead of burned out. Yeah, it's exactly I mean, it's kind of where I'm at now with small kids. It's like I don't yeah. want to just debilitate myself. I want to be able to be on the ground, you know, with my kids and rolling around and not hurting. Going to failure is no more effective than, than leaving a rep or two in the tank in terms of the measurable benefits for hypertrophy. And that lends itself well to what you said when we started. Uh, appealing to people over 40 yeah. because it's less fatigue. Yeah. And that's one of the biggest concerns for joints and just for general energy, and et mental. cetera. Mental energy is that, that you don't need to, to create that much fatigue for your body and, and cause that much DOMS, delayed onset muscle soreness. And it should be enjoyable. You should feel refreshed. It would be a little sore, but it should be uh, the muscles, not the joints yeah. or the, the central nervous system. You get that, that post-squat, what we call the sleepies, where you're just exhausted the whole next day and you got brain fog. Or it loops around and you don't sleep because you're... 100%. Yeah, it's not training. essential. Yeah. It's really not. And I used to think it was. It's coming from a guy who was a power lifter, first and foremost. And I always tried to grind out that last rep to failure and have somebody give me a spot. Not terribly more effective. Yeah. You're not at all more effective. That gets us to load. You can lift a heavy weight, about 85% of your one rep max, for around five reps. Or you can lift um, a medium weight, around 70% of your one rep max, for between eight and 15 reps. Or you can lift a pretty light weight, about 30% of your one rep max, for 20 to 30 reps. They all yield equivalent hypertrophy outcome. Assuming you get to within one to three reps of failure and have adequate volume and frequency, the load, you get a consistent hypertrophy response irrespective of the amount of weight that you use. Interesting. Having said that, you get more fatigue in the five rep range, you do get stronger, you'll get more strength, you get more fatigue in the five rep range, you also experience a little more fatigue in the 20 plus rep range. So this seems to be the sweet spot in terms of getting the best hypertrophy with the least fatigue, again, allowing you to recover faster, increasing your volume and frequency over time. There is a caveat to that in terms of tendons. You need about a minimum of 70% of your one rep max to get an effective stimulus to strengthen and grow tendons over time. Okay. So the lighter weight's probably not terribly effective for that. But you don't need the 85% loads, uh, which I liked as a power lifter, but I discovered that that wasn't the optimal way for hypertrophy because it would compromise the amount of time it would take you to recover and that would compromise your volume and your frequency. If you can just 
add, keep adding weight until you, you know, have a difficult rep, you're within 10%, and you can just make a, you know, kind of an average, uh, an estimate of what that is. The one rep max can be a guesstimate, it can be a general number. Still, when you want to find the right rep range, anywhere between eight and 15 reps, it's just an estimate. Here's how I kind of determine it when I get a client. They'll ask me how many reps if I don't know yet what they're capable of. Whenever this happens, uh, yeah. then I know they've reached maximal muscle fiber recruitment and some of the fibers are dropping off and failing. Yeah. I'm good. That's the end of your set. You don't need to grind out another one. Yeah. When the speed significantly reduces, I know they've reached what we call maximal muscle got fiber it, got recruitment. It, got it. Tempo, a lot of uh, discussion about what, what the pace that, that a rep should yeah. be at. It seems that about a two to five second eccentric you know, bring it down under control is really all that is. You know, okay. one, two, press, or one, two, three, press. A 10 second eccentric's unnecessary and not more effective. Uh, yeah, and yeah. a one second eccentric where there's, where there's no resistance on the way down, not as effective as controlling the movement. And so that would be your tempo. Rest periods, two to three minutes. There's a lot of discussion about this. We're talking primarily about hypertrophy today. Yeah. And the research suggests that if you give your body, say if you do a dip for chest, Give it two minutes before you do another set of dips. A smaller body part like triceps or biceps might only need 90 seconds. Calves might only need 90 seconds. A squat, you might need three or four minutes just to remember your name if it's a heavy, <laughs> you know, set of 12 or something like that. So kind of base it on your ability to recover from that set and be able to invest a similar amount of effort without a significant decline in the number of reps or the amount of weight that you used previously, uh, which would be mostly from, say, oxygen debt, or you know, lactate, uh, hydrogen ion buildup. You wanna be able to, to somewhat recover from the previous exercise or the set of dips so that you can do a reasonably close to the same amount of reps or weight that you did to the prior set. A lot of times people will do a lot of sets very fast to save time, and you end up down into kind of what a muscular endurance really, kind of like a CrossFit, or, and that yeah. would be specific to your sport. That yeah. might be, you know, it's one of the ways that we train MMA athletes is we, we shorten the rest periods. Uh, and that's because they've, you know, the demand of their sport is such that you, you have to keep yeah. a certain level of, of uh, aerobic fitness or muscular endurance. But for hypertrophy, try and give yourself two minutes. Now I know a lot of folks, they gotta get in and out of the gym. Yeah. And they don't have time to sit there and wait for their chest to recover from their previous exercise. Well, that's when we start uh, using what we call um, uh, supersetting antagonistic body parts, like we did today. Yep. So you would do a set for chest and just rest one minute, and then do a set for back and rest one minute. Well, by the time you get back to chest, you've had your two plus minutes of rest, and you can get an equivalent number of reps or move about the same amount of weight the same number of times. And that'll give you an optimum hypertrophy benefit, but also shorten the window under which you have to be here in the gym. We finished an entire workout today where we did eight sets for chest and eight sets for back in 25 minutes. And there was four of us in here training. And so that got us into this time constraint for busy professionals. However you decide to do it, it doesn't matter as long as it fulfills these hypertrophy guidelines so you get the best benefit out of it. Next to be periodization, you should have a plan and then try and progress load over time, your body will adapt. Yeah. And it has to have a, a progressive stimulus, meaning you gotta add one more rep, or five more pounds, or one more set in terms of increasing your, your volume, your total sets per week. Progress that over a period of six to 12 weeks through what we would call a hypertrophy block. Remembering periodically, maybe every four weeks or so, to have a, we call a deload, yeah. where you just use maybe half the weight for half the reps or half the sets, or just take a day off. Yeah. Uh, people think that if they take a day off, they're gonna regress, and in fact, the long-term research suggests that those people who train continuously versus those people who take a week off every four to six weeks, they have similar outcomes. Interesting. And so you don't need to invest uh, all that time and energy, uh, and you won't get any extra benefit out of it. Yeah. So pay yourself first by giving yourself some rest time every now and then. It's a good refresher. And you could choose to completely take the whole week off, or you can choose to, again, just go in and move a little. Yeah. Half the sets, half the reps, half the weight. It won't feel challenging at all. You'll get nowhere near the amount of volume or effort that would be required for hypertrophy, but it's long-term, comparing groups of people who use both methods, it's the same outcome. Hopefully out of this, you can craft your own plan and be off to the races. And Stan, as always, man, it's a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much.